Welcome to Scam Baiting Emails. Today's adventure will be shorter than many of our previous encounters. I'm in the midst of a mind-boggling four-month-long correspondence with a scammer. And when that's completed, well, you'll be the first to know. Today's scam baiting encounter is with possibly the most incompetent scammers I've ever had the pleasure of, you know, encountering. But I figured I should try to make friends with them because they work at the White House and I have quite a few parking tickets. It begins with an email from Mrs. William Helen Grace. And like most urgent emails, it is addressed to undisclosed recipients. It mentions a consignment box of $5 million U.S. dollars and assures me that this big box of money is not from any criminal source. Because, you know, if it were from a criminal source, they would tell me. But I can rest assured because this is in accordance with the Clearance Certificate Degree Paragraph 12, Second 9, S Sub 2B, which states that any funds meant for release must be certified free by obtaining the clearance certificate to clear it free from any criminal original. Reconfirm us your full information to avoid wrong delivering, such as, and they ask for a bunch of my personal information, which really is none of their business. This, your funds delivery, has been signed by U.S. President Mr. Joe Biden. Well, this sounds promising, so I reply, Dear Mrs. Williams Helen Grace, what is this consignment box of which you speak? Are you referring to my income tax refund? I hope so, but I can't explain from your message. Unlike young people today, I was raised to be patriotic and proud to pay my taxes. On the annual tax day that comes every year, I stand in line and look ahead and I can see for miles and miles of my generation of Americans patiently waiting to pay their taxes. My gratitude will be great if you kindly will explain what Mr. Biden is requesting of me. I would like to help if I can. In sincerity, Rob, or as my friends call me, Rob McClint. I don't know what happened to Mrs. William Helen Grace, but several hours later, I receive another email from the same address, but from Mr. Johnson James. Hi, Rob McClellan. This consignment box that you are about to receive, provided by federal government to deliver it to your home address, and it's signed by Mr. President. Please, you are to reply back with your information, such as your current phone number, your current home address, your current nearest airport, and any of your ID card, so it will deliver to you as soon as possible. Two minutes later, Mr. Johnson James is back to say, am recently now at Texas in Dulles International Airport in taxes, so you are to reply back as soon as possible you can. I hit reply. And this time it goes to Mr. Johnson James at a different address than previously. Dear Mr. Johnson James, I do not recall talking to you before. I was talking to Mrs. Williams Helen Grace. Are you her job replacement employee? As I told Mrs. Williams Helen Grace, I do not understand what you mean by consignment box. Please explain what you mean so that I can follow your instructions. Seven minutes later, I discover something I had overlooked. Dear Mr. Johnson James, I just now, at this moment today, saw that you sent me two different emails. Please accept my apology for not responding to your second email, number two, until now. Are you still at Texas in Dulles International Airport, or were you just there on a connection flight to another airport? If you have a layover there, I highly recommend Uncle Boyardee's Original Hominy Grits Restaurant. It is not far from Dulles International Airport, and the food there is so good that it is highly worth the short taxi ride. Please let me know if you have time to enjoy it. Oh, and I guess you could get there with an Uber, too. Please reply to my first email that I already sent you earlier about what you mean by consignment box. Dear Rob McClen, I receive all your emails. Please, your current phone number is needed to us as soon as possible, so we will call you and explain the consignments to you. Also, the consignments is still in taxes. And before a full minute can pass, Johnson James has something else to say. Send me your current phone number as soon as possible. But I'm finding this to be rather confusing, and I don't mind saying so. I do not wish to appear dunderheaded, but I do not understand why you are answering Mrs. Williams Helen Grace's emails. 
What happened to Mrs. Williams Helen Grace? Do you work inside Mr. Biden's White House the same way she does? You said you want to talk to me on my current phone number. I do not feel comfortable giving my current phone number to a complete stranger, you, whom I do not know, without first knowing who the person is. Please elucide me on these questions so that we may avoid further delay. I also would like to know what you mean by consignment box. Dear Rob McClinn, I work with Mrs. William William Helen, and she supposed be the one to talk to you as she did in first, but she was not around now to do so, so I was instructed to be the one to contact you about this consignment box coming up to you. And one minute later, the reason why I want you to send me your current phone number is to call you and explain this better to you, also we avoid much delays. This time, Johnson James waits a full 18 minutes before impatiently following up with me yet again. This consignment box that about to deliver to your doorstep, provided by USA Embassy and federal government for a compensation as victim, so please send me your current phone number to call you and explain more to you. But his reference to a compensation as victim provides just the clue I need to solve the mystery of what this is all about, I think. Dear Mr. Johnson James, are you referring to that time around seven years ago when I visited Prague, Europe, and a pickpocket on a public bus stole both my wallet and my money belt without my realizing it until later? I filed reports with the local police and also the USA Embassy, but until now I have never heard anything further. After my credit cards were stolen, I could not even pay my hotel bill. Because the hotel called the police on me, they interrogated me for two or maybe three days. They acted like I was the criminal and not the victim. When I got back home to the USA, my sister's husband, who was a lawyer, said I should sue the pickpocket to get everything back. But I have no idea who the pickpocket was. If you can provide me with his, the pickpocket's name, I will check with my brother-in-law to see if I can still sue the real criminal. Thank you for your kind assistance in this matter. P.S. Am I correct that you too work at the White House with Mrs. Williams Helen Grace? If you do, please say hello to her and also to Ron Ziegler if you see him there. He works in the West Wing. And at that point, just as I am in the midst of solving the mystery, my email to Mr. Johnson James is returned to me because the address can't be found or is unable to receive mail. Hmm. Do you suppose he blocked me? Apparently not. The email account that you tried to reach is disabled. I guess I'd better try to straighten this out with Mrs. Williams Helen Grace. Dear Mrs. Williams Helen Grace, I am sorry to bother you, but Mr. Johnson James sent me several urgent emails today, but when I tried to reply, the Gmail system said your message wasn't delivered to this address because the address couldn't be found or is unable to receive mail. Because of the urgency of his emails, I fear something unfortunate has happened to him. Do you know if Mr. Johnson James is okay? If so, do you know why his email address mysteriously stopped working so suddenly? I do not wish to worry you, but if Mr. Johnson James has disappeared, then I thought you would want to know about it at my earliest convenience. Dear Rob McClen, Mr. James Johnson email was disabled by Google, so it not working anymore, but he was all right. So I message you for you to send me your information as I told you about the consignment box, so I will deliver it to your home address. Dear Mrs. Williams Helen Grace, please give this email to Mr. Johnson James. Dear Mr. Johnson James, Google disabled you? Do they know you work at the White House where the president lives? I assume they quickly discovered their mistake and apologized and made your email able again, yes? Or maybe you're not allowed to share any of the actual details with me if the Secret Service is involved. Does this mean that from now on I should use this other address to send email both to you and to Mrs. Williams Helen Grace? Or again, I hope that Google has fixed their mistake by now and re-abled your Gmail. To remind you what your most recent email to me said, you mentioned compensation as a victim. My reply to that email is what was returned to me as address not found. So we don't get lost in our correspondence, I will reprint my original email reply to you below. In that original email reply, I wanted to make sure I knew what victim incident you were referring to. 
Here is the original email I sent to you that was returned to me. It contains much information we should find useful to work together. And I reprint the entire original email I had sent him. To my dismay, that email is returned to me also as undeliverable. So I try once again to reach Mr. Johnson James at his original email address. To whoever gets this, if anybody... First, I tried to write to Mr. Johnson James, but Gmail said his email stopped working. So I wrote to Mrs. Williams Helen Grace, and she wrote back to me. So I wrote back to her and asked her to give my earlier email to Mr. Johnson James, and then Gmail said that address does not work anymore either. I need to send an email to Mr. Johnson James urgently so that we may discuss the consignment box for victims. I have reprinted the email for Mr. Johnson James below, underneath this. If whoever reads this, please help me by giving the below email to Mr. Johnson James so that finally he can read it and answer me. Please give this email to Mr. Johnson James. And once again, I reprint the entire original email I have been trying to get to Mr. Johnson James. And it immediately bounces back to me because address not found. About an hour later, guess who I hear from? Mr. James Johnson, writing from Mrs. Williams Helen Grace's account. Hello, this is Mr. James Johnson. Please, you are to get back to me as soon as possible, so the delivery will make to you immediately as we told you. Half an hour later, I receive another email from Mrs. William Helen Grace's account. I'm guessing it, too, actually is from Mr. James Johnson. Please, dear Rob McLean, your current phone number is needed to us as soon as possible. But I don't see those last two emails until 17 hours later, as I explained to Mr. Johnson James. I just this minute discovered the two emails you sent to me in my spam folder. Please send any and all email directly to my inbox. It has wasted so much of my time to try to send emails to you or to Mrs. Williams Helen Grace and then have Google send them back to me because those addresses have been discontinued. I think part of the reason that happens is you or Mrs. Williams Helen Grace keep telling me to write to you at her address. In fact, this very email that you are reading is for you, but to get it to you, I am told to send it to her new address. Maybe this has something to do with White House security or something, but in my opinion, it is very inefficient. My next-door neighbor always is complaining about how the government can't do anything right, and I always defend you, but in my opinion, as a citizen and occasional voter, it appears that your department does not run efficiently, but instead in a higgly-piggly manner that just wastes my time. I do not blame you personally. I understand you probably have a boss who runs things and must be an idiot or something. But he or she leaves you to shoulder the blame while you loyally keep your nose to the grindstone and are knee-deep in paperwork. But if something ever goes right in your department, I'll bet he or she is quick to elbow you aside and take all the credit for when something goes right. I tried three different times to send an email to you or to Mrs. Williams Helen Grace, and each time Gmail said they don't know your address and returned it to me. I do not want to receive telephone calls or have you send anything to my house until I am able to get my original email delivered to you and also to receive your detailed reply to my original email to you, which contains numerous details. Right after these words, I am going to reprint the words I wrote in the last email I tried to send to you. If this email that I am writing right now does reach you, please reply to the email I am reprinting right after these words so we can finally move forward with this project if indeed my compensation as a victim is related to what happened in Prague, Europe. Also, please tell me what one email address I always should use to write to you and what address to use if I want to write to Mrs. Williams Helen Grace, just in case I do. Below these words and my name, you will find the email I have been trying to get to you. That is the email below this. Will you please read now and reply to it as soon as possible? And then I reprint that repeat of my original message. And I include my original email to Mr. Johnson James. A few hours later, I hear from Mrs. Williams Helen Grace. Please, dear Rob McLean, you are to provide your direct phone number to me as soon as possible. Well, 
I didn't get where I am today by providing my direct phone number to someone when I don't even know who it is. To whom it may concern, I don't even know if the latest email came from Mrs. Williams Helen Grace or from Mr. Johnson James. The email says it is from Mrs. Williams Helen Grace, but it shows the photograph of a man next to her name. It also tells me to reply to this address, which is one of the addresses that Gmail has discontinued. That is why instead I am sending this reply to this address. If, after all the extra work you have made me do, you will not even pay me the respect of answering the questions in that email I have sent you four times, then, as I already told you in my previous email before this one, I do not want to speak to either of you on the direct telephone, and I do not want you to send anything to my private home address. This is the last and final time I will request that you answer just those few easy questions for me. Even if I do not work for the White House United States, I still feel this way. P.S. If you respond to this message, please remember to send your message to my inbox and not my spam folder, which is what happened last time. A few hours later, I received this from Mrs. Williams Helen Grace's email account, but apparently not from Mrs. Williams Helen Grace. Dear Robbie McClinn, I am James Johnson. Please, I need your telephone number because I am having a problem in replying in any email. By now, I have lost all patience and have dropped any attempt to be polite, courteous, and or respectful. If you do not have the ability to reply to my email, you certainly are not competent to handle the delivery of an important consignment box. Either reply to my original email answering the easy questions I asked you, or stop wasting my time. Cordially, Rob Rob McClent. Now that is certain to result in the kind of responsive, informative reply I doggedly have been trying to acquire. Or maybe not. Dear Robbie McClen, you are to fulfill your information to me, such as your home address, current nearest airport, current phone numbers, and I'd as soon as possible. I tell Johnson James or James Johnson or whoever the heck it is, one, it's Rob or Rob, not Robbie. Two. Is there some sort of disability that prevents you from reading, comprehending, and replying to my previous emails? As I proclaimed before, either reply to my original email, answering the easy questions I asked you, or stop wasting my time. And his email bounces again. So finally, I end this frustrating encounter by sending the same message to one of the other addresses they had used, and once again, I pretty much yell at him. Either reply to my original email, answering the easy questions I asked you, or stop wasting my time. Heartiest felicitations, Rob Rob McClent. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel so you'll know whenever I've added a new scam baiting email video. If you'll be kind enough to comment below on your reactions to this video, I promise to make sure Rob sees it. It's been an honor to share this scam baiting adventure with you. In sincerity and on behalf of Rob Rob McClint.